Hi, this is me. My name is Tom and I love working in the garage. I like working on all kinds of stuff, but mainly turbo cars. I enjoy thinking about cars, talking about cars, dreaming about cars, and sharing my car hobby with everyone. I've been posting car projects and updates in the form of words and pictures on my website since 1999, and now I want to try something new, video. This is my helper, Torch the Giant Lego Man. Today we're working on my 91 Eagle Talon Turbo all-wheel drive. I've had this car since 2005 and I've had lots of fun with it. I've got tons of pictures and stories on my website if you'd like to follow its transformation from tired stalker to overpowered giggle machine. After getting my Talon out of storage, I took it to a local DSM Evo meet to watch some of these guys do this, which led me to wanting more of these. I call it getting bit by the wouldn't 100 more horsepower just be perfect bug? So I got bit and this video is what happened next. First I got a plan together. The plan was to take the small things off the car and put bigger things on. Oh you know, just a few odds and ends. Like the exhaust manifold, turbo, downpipe, injectors, fuel pump, you get the idea. I didn't waste any time tearing apart this perfectly good running car and before you know it I had the old stuff off and a nice big turbo sized hole in the engine bay. After selling my old gently used parts, the new stuff started rolling in. First up were the fuel system goodies. 1250cc injectors, a high flow filter and feed setup, and a high output in-tank pump and rewire kit from J Racing. With the determination of a young Chuck Norris, I ripped open the hatch, yanked out the old pump, and had the new one in place in record time. Shortly after, I made this filter and feed assembly to feed those hungry injectors. Then came the stars of the show. A cast stainless steel turbo manifold by ERL Performance and this. My new precision turbo and engine billet 6266 CEA turbocharger. It features a billet 62 millimeter compressor wheel, ported compressor cover with a 4 inch inlet and 2.5 and inch outlet, a 63AR T3 turbine housing with a 3 inch V band discharge, 66 millimeter 76 trim turbine wheel with most importantly, a generous sprinkling of unicorn tears for 31% more magic than previous versions. I couldn't wait to get this big snail bolted up so the fun part could begin. Fabrication, or in other words, me taking large useful pieces of steel and making small useless pieces of steel out of them. The first task was to build the downpipe. I started with a PTE weld flange and clamp kit, which made it up perfectly to the turbo and the 3-inch pipe I was using. The tricky part of the downpipe is the tight first bend, which required cutting and welding, and more cutting, and more welding, and a little more welding, until I ended up with this. After even more cutting and more welding, this was my finished product. It took lots of time, but I'm happy with the fit and how it turned out. I cleaned up my amateur welds, sprayed on some high heat black paint, gave it an ex exhaust wrap snuggie. Next it was time to bolt the turbo assembly to the head for good using all new hardware that I got from Force Performance. After that was done it was time to fab up the turbo oil drain line. To make room for this the stock front motor mount bracket had to be ground down a bit. Nothing serious though just a small ridge removed off of one side. I really just wanted an excuse to use my angle grinder. Here's how it turned out. The aluminum oil drain flange I'm using had what looked to me like an undersized drain hole. I fixed that by gasket matching it using a drill and a carbide burr bit. I then reinstalled the modified motor mount parts and the new turbo oil drain bits. After even more cutting and welding, I whipped up this new 2.5 inch lower intercooler pipe. It fits much better than the old one ever did. I also switched to dual slim fans to allow as much room as possible for my next job, fabbing up a wastegate dump tube. Judging by my reaction, this was going to be tricky. There's very little space to work with in that area. I grabbed the welding helmet and got to work. My first two attempts were busts. Finally, I got it right the third time. I really just wanted an excuse to use my chop saw. Die, pipe! Die! 
After getting the fit right, I painted my new pride and joy of a dump tube black and hid my not quite prize winning welds under so many layers of exhaust wrap. You know, I don't actually work this fast, but I do own an ill fitting set of overalls named Matt. I guess I could take the name label off, but what fun would that be? Sheesh, do I always look this angry when wrapping exhaust parts? I guess so. And here's the finished wastegate dump tube. Oh, Lego man. Ah, that's not funny. Moving on, here it is in its cozy new home. All right! Thanks again for watching. If you like this, give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment and tell me what you think. Next time, we'll go through the rest of the stuff on the to-do list, hopefully fire this thing up and go for a drive. So thanks again, see you next time.